Hello and welcome to Sonder. My name is Maggie. I am a knitter, sewist, spinner, new doctor, new mom living in Denver, Colorado. For those of you who have stuck with me, I'm back. <laughs> Um, thank you so much for coming in and checking in and the very few times I've been able to get the my act together and make a little podcast. Um, 2022 was amazing, but also very hard. I think, you know, having a new baby and being a new mom posed a challenge that I was ready to take on excited to take on, honored to be able to do. However, was challenging like for sure. <laughs> um, and y'all, let it go down in the history books that Edie slept through the night for the first time, New Year's Eve into New Year's Day, and has done it every day since. It is currently the 3rd of January, and I'm coming off of three full nights of sleep without having to wake up and feed a baby, without being pregnant and having a big belly. Y'all, I have not slept through the night in over a year and I feel amazing. And so I am really excited to come back and connect and reflect and hang out with you guys on a much more consistent basis, which I know that I have said that many times over the last year, but I think now that Edie is sleeping, I'm back, baby. Anyway, um, things have been so great, but this is going to be a little bit of a different podcast. I've been seeing so much pop up on my YouTube and Instagram about things that people have knit in 2022 and plans for the year to come. And honestly, <laughs> I am not organized enough, nor have I been organized enough for the last year to keep track of what I have knitted for 2022. I don't even remember. It was a blur. I don't even know what happened. So, I am going to use this time to reflect on the year to come and what I want to do in my making life and also with this YouTube channel because I have such an awesome group of people who come here and say hi and connect and I want to make that more of a priority in the coming year. So with that, I am going to <clears throat> pull up my feminist agenda. I got this amazing journal from a little paper store here in Denver. And it's actually like the best thing for me because the inside literally just has a to-do list and then check boxes for each day, which I've kind of co-opted this to just be able to write some notes for the year to come, but I have found it really helpful. And so... I have some channel goals, some knitting goals, spinning, reading, and I wanted to go over them with you and also use this as an opportunity to hold myself accountable for using this beautiful, beautiful yarn that I have in my stash. So more on that to come. But overall, my goals for this year can be summed up in two words, which I feel like I've already kind of subconsciously put in here a couple of times. And those words are connect and reflect. I think that in the days and haze that is having a new baby, for those of you who have not been here and are maybe checking me out for the first time, I had my first child, Edie Mae, and she is a spitfire ball of joy that I love so much. But it was like an intense time. Uh, she was born in April. And now, eight months later, I'm sleeping through the night. So it's beautiful. Anyway, I think that in the sort of haze that has been the last year, I have been just so in it, like so in motherhood that I really haven't had the time to connect and 
reflect about what's been going on. Um, my life just day to day has changed so much and I want to spend time thinking about that and keeping track of it and connecting with you all but also connecting with my family and people, friends, like people who I just haven't had the bandwidth to spend a lot of time with over the last year. So that is my overarching goal. Those are my words for this year. And with that, I have some thoughts on channel goals and kind of reading and things like that. So in terms of my channel, my main goals are to put out about one video a week, which sounds crazy considering over the last year, I think I put out like four or five videos total for the whole year. <laughs> but I think that part of that is it was so hard for me to have a time where I could come and sit and be alone. And now that Edie is sleeping and I have more bandwidth, I just think I'll be able to do that. So I don't think that each week it will be a traditional podcast where I show all of my works in progress and all of my recent reads. What I am going to do is have one video a month be a more traditional podcast and then the rest of the videos be a knit and chat or talking about a whip or talking about a book that I'm really excited about. Something that is smaller and more concrete and videos that are not like a full feature length film. So that's the plan. Um, I really hope that I can keep up with it. I think that it will be a fun way for me to keep track of my life and my little growing family and our day to day and just sharing the fun things that we've been up to. Um, in terms of reading goals, this has been an interesting change. So before Edie was born, I was reading like 70 to 100 books a year. And last year I read less than 25 books, which makes sense. But also looking at my stats, I'm just like, wow, that changed. <laughs> um, and so this year, my goal is going to be to read 25 books in the next year so that I'm just kind of inching the needle forward ever so slightly. I think last year I read a total of like 23 books. So it'll just be a couple more books than last year. And I'll check in throughout the year and talk about the books I'm reading and my favorite books so far and things that I think everyone should be reading. And I really want to read a lot of the books that are on my shelf. Like I have so many books on my shelf and I follow so many booktubers that I'm constantly wanting to bring in more books um, in the same way that I'm constantly wanting to bring in more yarn. But I really want to read what I have, um, which transitions a little bit into my knitting goals for this year. And I am really wanting to knit what I have what I already own because I already have so many sweater quantities of yarn that are beautiful. I mean, gorgeous, gorgeous yarn that I want to knit through and I don't want to just languish in my stash any longer. So this year, oh, I'm so excited. I am going to be going to Rhinebeck with a few of my knitting friends here in Denver. We're gonna get an Airbnb and we're gonna go climbing in the gunks and um, go to the festivals. It's gonna be amazing. And so my plan is to not buy any yarn until I go to Rhinebeck. And I don't wanna just like go crazy at Rhinebeck because I haven't bought yarn all year, but I really wanna kind of clear out the stash, knit through some beautiful things and then go into Rhinebeck being excited to buy a little bit of yarn. So um, there is some caveats to that. <laughs> the couple of times in which I will allow myself to buy yarn is if I need like one more skein of yarn to complete a sweater. For instance, if I haven't bought enough yarn for the sweaters I want to make, or if the other thing is that I also am taking part in um, Farmer's Daughter's Fibers Sock Squad, which means that each month a new sock set will be coming to my door, which 
Honestly, I feel like that is the perfect compromise because I'll still get that like exciting new thing to open and new yarn to look at and oogle. Um, and also just, I need a lot of socks. I haven't been knitting socks very much. I don't really know why. I think it's something about the heel turn. I'm like, it feels too complicated in my little brain. Um, and now all of my socks have been darned. They've been fixed but are getting new holes and I'm like you know what I need to just knit more socks because honestly I wear my hand knit socks every single day from like October until April and then a lot of other days in there that are not like winter you know I think you can wear wool socks all year round so anyway Let's talk about the knitting goals because I feel like that's why you guys are actually here. And I should say you all because guys is gendered and I'm really trying to get better about that. So sorry y'all. Um, my knitting goals. So the main thing that you have already heard is that I'm gonna knit my stash. But I kind of want to go through some of the projects and the yarn that I have already in my stash for those projects. So the first thing is socks. Like I said, my socks are really, really, I have like a giant stack of yarn here to share you. This might be a long, a long one. Anyway, um, socks are something that I really need. And so I have started the sock squad and I just wanted to show off my first sock because I did get my first sock squad shipment and it was beautiful. The sock squad this year is based off of like plants and their pollinators. And this was the yarn that came. It's this really beautiful kind of periwinkle blue that has speckles of purple and darker blue and brown. It is so gorgeous. <laughs> and it came with this darker blue contrast color. And with this, I am knitting a self-drafted sock Oop. that has a pico top. And I am obsessed with this. I'm actually, this is going to be essentially a vanilla sock with just a pico edge at the top which you might be able to get on Ravelry, but I might just write up for people because I am loving it. I just think if you have a really, really special skein of yarn, it's turning out so beautiful. So this is it. Just the very top. I love it. It's so beautiful. So that is the beginning of my sock. And I am actually planning on knitting these socks two at a time, but not like the crazy way people knit them two at a time, which like more power to you, but in that I am going to knit the cuff and then I'm gonna cast on the cuff on the other side so that I have like plain stockinette and then heel turn stuff going on kind of simultaneously. I think that will really help my goal to knitting at least 12 socks this year. So one sock a month. All right, the next thing is that there are a couple of things that I need to knit for myself um, that are not sweaters and that is things like hats and gloves. And so I wanna focus on that because what I end up doing is knitting hats and mittens and things like that for other people. And now I have like very few hand knit hats and no mittens. I don't have a single pair of mittens for myself. So, I have one 100 gram, what do you call this? It's not a skein. I don't know. I have some new to do. <laughs> and it is this really beautiful creamy white color that has shades of orange and like hot pink and gray. It is so complex as all new to din is. And I want to knit this into a best beret by J James and Watts, or um, that new really beautiful hat that Fibertails just came out with. I will put a picture here. So 
I'm still mulling it over. I'm honestly not totally sure that I can pull off a beret. I really like the thought of a beret and I think they're so beautiful, but I just like don't know if I'm that cool. And so I might go with something more rustic and knit that beautiful new, I think it's called the Grow Hat um, by Lurka of Fiber Tales. Mm. I mean. So that is one thing that I'm really looking forward to knitting. And the next thing is a pair of mittens. So I purchased Ski Ellie of Skein Deer. She uh, released a booklet of mitten patterns and I was looking at them and I love every single one of them. And as you can see, I love love color work. I love it so much. I find it very p potato chippy. It's something that I really, really enjoy knitting. However, most of the sweaters that I have to knit this year are not color work. And so my thought was that I can knit mittens as gifts for my family and then also knit myself a pair of mittens because that's allowed and get my kind of color work fix because I think only one of the sweaters that I am planning on knitting this year is color work. So I first wanna knit the DK weight mittens in that pattern in this absolutely beautiful yarn that was sent to me by Kat of the Heather and Hops podcast. Y'all, I have had this on my bedside table since she sent it to me like a year ago, almost exactly. I love it so much. It is rustic. It is so special. It was one of the most beautiful gifts that I have ever received. I feel so thankful and so lucky. And with this rustic kind of workout horse yarn, I really wanna knit it into a pair of mittens. I think it will be so beautiful. And Kat actually knit this into a pair of socks that were color work and they held up really well. And so I think as mittens, these will be bulletproof in the most beautiful way. And so that is my plan to knit myself some beautiful mittens out of this yarn that I have had on my bedside table for a year. Ugh so beautiful and it's um so this was from a flock of sheep like very very close to where uh cat lives it's 50 percent valet black nose i may be pronouncing that wrong and 50 percent jacob so i am really really excited to knit myself some beautiful accessories okay um, let's get into the sweaters. I feel like that is what people are most excited about. And honestly, it's what I'm most excited about. So like, let's get into it. Let's do this. I'm drinking apple juice because I'm a mom now. Okay. So let's do this. I have a basket plus more yarn, that all are one skein to represent whole sweater quantities in my stash that I have. And this is not um, a video that is meant to make people feel badly. Obviously, I know that I am extremely privileged to be able to have purchased this much yarn in the past and have a home that has space with which to put this yarn. Like I recognize that and I don't think that everybody should aspire to have this much stash. In fact, I'm trying to get rid of some of my stash or as Kat would put it, my wool pantry. Um, but I just thought it would be fun to kind of go through the sweater quantities that I have and the patterns that I want to make with them. So the other thing that I will say is that I think there is literally no way in hell that I'll be able to make it through all of this yarn this year because I'm only one person and I work 80 hours a week. So there you go. <laughs> um, so let's start from the top. The first pattern that I really want to knit is the, well, 
I'll say actually, I just said the first pattern, but these are not in any order. I'm the type of person who I will just wake up one day and be like, I'm gonna go knit this thing. And so who knows when each of these will be finished, but I'm just gonna go for it. So the first pattern I wanna talk about is the Maywick by Gudrun Johnson. This is this beautiful lace pattern that is in Gudrun Johnson's book, um, Ooh, I forget what it's called, but I have that book and I love like every single pattern in it. But I'm really drawn to this one in particular. She has knit it, as you can see, in a really beautiful kind of stripe motif. And I am actually planning on knitting this in one color. So the texture will be there, but the color changes will not. And I have this sweater quantity of whole super soft. I think I got this like two years ago. This is in the, um, it's a hundred percent wool and it is in the colorway toffee, which is this really beautiful, dark, dark brown. I think that is probably the best color representation, but I'm going to bring it up closer just so you can see this yarn has a ton of depth in it. It's really, really beautiful. So that is the first one. The next sweater I want to talk about is actually related to the advent calendar I got. So this year I got an advent calendar from Naughty Pine Fiber Company. Here's probably a better representation. This is a beautiful yarn dyer who is out of, I think, Laramie, um, somewhere in Wyoming. I could be wrong. Douglas. It's right on there. Douglas, Wyoming. And her aesthetic is so beautiful. Opening up this yarn calendar was so so lovely this year so this is the 25th day skein and i will probably be making this into some socks or maybe a hat i haven't totally decided this could be a pretty cool muscle burra but probably a pair of socks because i really need socks but i got this beautiful advent calendar and i actually um purchased the advent calendar that was like the artisanal advent calendar so it came with some other things one of which was this set of stitch markers from um horse feather fiber arts and this was so beautiful and so to, so to my like western aesthetic so so gorgeous they're natural stone. This one is shaped like a buffalo. There's a little triangle, and then this one is stamped with a little pine tree on it. So beautiful. So I kept these on here because I knew that I was gonna show you guys at some point. It also came with a beautiful um, print of artwork that I'm going to hang up in my um, bathroom. And then it came with two of these beautiful ceramic candle holders as well as these beeswax candles. It smells amazing. I am really excited to light these, but I wanted to be able to just kind of look at them and see their beauty. So that was what came along with this entire bowl of beautiful yarn. So my plan is to use all of these minis to make the Piet sweater by Johanna Gerrish. Gerrish? I'm not sure how to pronounce that name, but it is this beautiful striped sweater. And I am going to use all of these yarns together. I'll probably follow the striping pattern but I will use my own color combos and obviously use many, many more colors than the pattern actually calls for. So my plan is to just take all of these beautiful, beautiful minis I have and hold them double. So I will knit from the inside and the outside of the bag or the ball and make it into a DK weight, which is what the sweater calls for. I'm so excited for this. There are two skeins of yarn that I will probably buy in order to have a, it be a little bit cohesive and also for the like cuffs and neckband and stuff. 
And that is these two skeins. So this one is Alpenglow, this beautiful tonal brown. And then this one is Hobo Pool, which is this really gorgeous kind of sage, but bluish green, so beautiful. So these colors will be like the two main colors. And then I will just put in all of these gorgeous minis with it. So that is probably the one that I'm most excited about, to be honest, but I feel like I need to wait in order to get those couple skeins of yarn in order to really start the sweater in earnest. Okay. The next sweater is the Ingrid sweater by Petite Knit, which I feel like everyone is talking about and knitting. Like we've all heard of it. I love it. And I have this sweater's quantity of really beautiful yarn from Yampa Valley Fiberworks, which this wool literally comes from the valley that I grew up in. So it's so, so special to me. And this is each skein. I think I have seven, six or seven skeins. It's 100% wool. Each one is 200 yards, worsted weight, and it is the colorway Seasons Change. It's this really beautiful, like, sherbet orangey pink. Obsessed. I think this will be something really fun to knit in, like, February or even later this month where it's, like, really dark and I just need something bright. Or maybe spring, honestly. Okay. The next sweater is the Perennial by Nora Gon. This is a sweater in the Worsted book. And I was able to purchase this beautiful sweater quantity of Cori Worsted by La Bienne May in the olive juice colorway. This beautiful, beautiful olive green that I think goes really, really well with my skin tone. And I just think it will be really, really lovely to have this really gorgeous cabled sweater in this beautiful olive green. So that is the plan. This was definitely a splurge. This was a sweater quantity that I actually bought for my birthday, my kind of gift to myself for my birthday this year. I was like, it's been a time. I gave birth. I deserve a sweater quantity of La Bienna May's Cori Worsted. So, so, so gorgeous. I I'm obsessed with this and it's so oh, just lofty and beautiful. That uh, pattern I believe is also knit flat and I'm one of those very controversial knitters who I really actually enjoy a cable pattern knit flat. All right. The next is another petite knit. You'll see a lot of petite knit just because I feel like her projects are very wearable. And so I just need more like things I can wear to work. And this is the Cumulus Blouse by Petite Knit. This is a really beautiful V-neck blouse that I'm planning in knitting in this black Biche Bouche Le Petit silk mohair <laughs> just in black so i have a bunch of this and i'm planning to knit a very beautiful fluffy easy to wear black sweater with that the next is the soiree by emily foden this is in her beautiful beautiful book knits about winter and I honestly fell in love with this sweater when Kat of the Heather and Hops podcast made this sweater. So gorgeous. And I've had this skein in my, or this yarn in my possession since like lockdown. So it's been a while. This is another really special wool. This is woolen, 100% Colorado sourced and milled. It's 80% fine merino, 10% Ramadale, and 10% blue face luster. And this is actually spun at the same mill in my kind of hometown or the town right next to my hometown in the same valley as this. So this was spun at Yampa Valley Fiberworks. 
and it is beautiful. While that was a worsted weight, this is a gorgeous sport weight. And then when Pearl Soho was having a sale on their Tessa Silk, I bought this beautiful um, Tessa Silk 60% fine uh, kid mohair and 40% silk in the color Partly Cloudy Blue. And my plan is to hold them together to make that beautiful cabled pattern. Honestly, this would be a really good bougie sweat sweatshirt uh, cowl knit along, so I might prioritize this sooner than I thought. But I'm knitting something else for the bougie sweatshirt, but you can always have more than one, right? Okay. The next thing that I want to knit is the November jacket by Petite Knit. And I am planning to knit this out of this other quantity of Newtonin that I have in this kind of gray green color. I honestly don't remember what the name of the color was, but it is so beautiful. And I really love this green. Green is my favorite color, hands down. And I think this would be a really beautiful cardigan. I think I have 600 grams of this. And so I think I would actually be able to make a pretty long cardigan. I really like that that cardigan, I believe, is top down. And so I can just kind of knit until I run out of yarn. <laughs> That's the plan. So the November jacket by Petite Knit. Are you guys tired yet? Are you sick of listening to this? I feel like it's just going on and on, but it's kind of fun to look through all of the things that I have and think about what I can make with them. All right, the next is another long cable. Well, that is a brioche cardigan. This will be a long cabled cardigan. I am hoping to make the uh, pitch by Emily Green in this beautiful piece fleece in the, so this is 75% Navajo Rambouillet and domestic fine wool and 25% mohair. I have another sweater out of this and it is so amazing. I've worn it so many times, so many times. It's so warm, not a pill to be seen, never depilled it. It's incredible. I love this yarn. And so I actually have two sweater, sweater quantities of this yarn. But this one will become that beautiful cable jacket. I'm so excited. It's so beautiful. And I think it'll just be like a fun, funky jacket to wear. The next, let's just keep on with the piece fleece. This is the same exact yarn, the worsted weight piece fleece, which honestly is more of an Aran. And this is in the woolly bear color. And I am planning on knitting this. I've had a couple different thoughts. One is that I might make um, Andrea Mowry's nurtured sweater into a cardigan. And my other thought is to do The Big Love by Anka Strick. Um, again, I saw Kat making that and it looks so nice. And I think this would be really beautiful. Something textured and delicious. So. <sighs> the next is the Botanical Yoke Pullover, which is a Pearl Soho pattern. And I have had this beautiful uh, Brooklyn Tweed Arbor 100% Targi wool in the treehouse colorway for so long and I think that would be such a beautiful sweater. So it's this cabled yoke that goes into um, really beautiful uh, two by two rib and I think it's something that I would be able to wear to work really really easily and is something I need to prioritize. Again, all of these yarns are so beautiful and I just have not been prioritizing them at all. The next is the Adventitious by Olga Putano Designs. And this is in a um, Lina magazine that I have. I have two skeins of this Magpie Fibers, which honestly, at first I was going to make into um, a kind of cover that I could use for breastfeeding, but I just didn't slash don't care about 
pulling my boob out and feeding my child. So I decided not to prioritize that and the yarn I was gonna make into that now can be made into other things. So I'm gonna use this um, Swanky Sock by Magpie Fibers in the Tupelo Extra colorway to make that beautiful t-shirt. The next is another petite knit and last petite knit. But this is the Balloon Cardigan by Petite Knit, and this is just some Shibui in the ivory color, and then some Barocco Ultra Fine 100% Superwash Wool in the color 5300, which I think is just the undyed. And I have some really beautiful buttons to go with this cardigan as well. So really just kind of copying Petite Knit's pattern almost exactly with this one. But I think that's one that I really should prioritize because that would be a great one to be able to wear to work. We're getting there. Only two left. But then I have some whips to talk about. So I hope this is fun for y'all. The next is the Metamorphic by Andrea Mowry. I bought this really gorgeous Metamorphic yarn. And this is the Marl lot number 14. So this is 400 yards and it's this mauvey pink that goes along with a gray and I also have deep bump. I have a few different skeins of deep bump so I'm gonna make these together. I think that this will fly when I start knitting it because I just love these color changing yarns and I just know that I will just want to keep going once I start it, so super beautiful. And I love that sweater. I think it will be really wearable. All right, I have one skein of Noro in the Naha colorway. This is the Noro Kakigori. And I am planning to knit this into a June top. I am almost finished with a June top that I started this summer. I didn't actually get to wear it in the summertime, but I'm hoping to prioritize knitting at least a couple of um, summer tops this year. And I think this would be a really fun one and one that I would wear a lot. We also have a more of this yarn that's from Yampa Valley Fiber Works. And this is the High Country Wool Kindred, which is also, um, I believe it's all from Colorado. Um, yes, this is 100% Colorado wool, but is also milled at, um, or spun, milled? I don't know. It's made into yarn <laughs> at Yampa Valley Fiber Works and then um, dyed, I believe, by the same people who own Hue Loco. But I have these two colorways. So I have Kindred in the Sport Natural Oatmeal so undyed, beautiful oatmeal color. And then this one is dyed and it's called Stag. My plan is to buy one more, maybe really, really dark brown, kind of like this, almost black, or maybe just a straight black, in order to make the Nordiska by Caitlin Hunter. Maybe just the black, I like that. I have made this pattern, this will be my third time. <laughs> The first two times it was just too small and I was using fingering weight yarn both times that I made that and so my hope is that using sport weight it will finally fit me. And I love it. It's really fun, beautiful v-neck like I will wear it all the time. So those are all of the sweater quantities that are untouched and I have to make into sweaters which is insane and part of the reason why I am doing a stashless 2023 um or at least stashless and stash down until <laughs> until Rhinebeck but I'm not planning on buying too much yarn at Rhinebeck it's more like for the experience I'm sure I'll come home with some things but that is all the untouched yarn and then my other thing is to finish a couple of whips that I have going so one of the whips is actually a very new whip and I will show it at my kind of end of the month podcast, but it is out of this yarn 
and it is the Monday sweater by Petite Knit, and it's for the Bougie Sweatshirt Cal that um, is being hosted by Casey of um, the Young Folk Knits podcast, and I'm really enjoying it. This is just this knitted in that is mostly gray, but it has these pops of bright pink and orange and peach. It's really, really beautiful. I think this one's called Corspinea or something like that. I don't know. I don't speak Swedish, but it'd be cool if I did. And so that is one whip that I would really like to finish. I think these are the things I'm going to prioritize first. The next is this long standing whip, which is the Daydreamer by Andrea Mowry out of this really, really beautiful navy blue yarn. I think this is the Fiber Company Cumbria in the fingering weight. And as you can see, I have knit the entire body and I just need to knit the sleeves, but I just haven't had it in me to pick up my needles and finish it. But I would love this, especially wearing it over um, high-waisted jeans or over... Um, a dress or something like that. I just think I would wear it constantly. And so I really need to finish it. And I've put so much work into it already. I just need to do it. So that is a very high priority. And then the last thing that I am working on kind of actively is the finishing up I have this sweater's quantity of Le Petit Lamb's Wool by Bichet Bouche, and this is in the soft orange brown colorway. It's so beautiful. And I am using this to recreate one of my favorite and most worn sweaters ever, and that is The Wool and Honey by Andrea Mowry. And I have come quite far on this. So I will actually, this Thursday, I'm gonna try to have my videos going out on Thursday. We'll see if I stick to that. But this Thursday, I will be putting out a podcast that is with my mom. I filmed this with my beautiful mother in October, I think right before Halloween. And I just haven't had the time to like edit it and put it out. But I think it's something that was really special to be able to do with her. And I want y'all to meet her. She's so lovely. So that is this is the first time that I show that off. It's in that video from a few months ago and I had just started it. And so I've put quite a bit of time into this. This is something that I really want to prioritize because that is one of my favorite sweaters that I have. Um, and it's just beautiful yarn to knit it with. So I love this sweater. I just think that yoke is so striking and it's really, really fun to knit. So. I honestly was knitting crazy on this and then I stopped knitting on it because the holidays happened and I needed to make gifts. <laughs> so the last thing that I want to talk about is some spinning. So I have a spinning wheel and I have been kind of dabbling at spinning and I signed up for a fiber calendar, I guess you could say. It is a, the, oh, I'm forgetting the name of the farm, but it's a farm up in Canada. And what they do is they send you a four ounce bit of fiber each month that is from a different species or breed of sheep. I think it's probably all the same species like dogs, but a different breed of sheep. <laughs> And I have so much of that beautiful yarn that, or beautiful wool that will all act in different ways. And I'm really excited to spin it up and find out what I like to spin and what kind of fibers I like. And it's all just beautiful natural wools. But I also have a handful of hand dyed um, fiber that I really want to get through because I love spinning so much. But it was just hard with a kid to spin, to be honest. But this is a um, yarn that I spun up in, I think, October? Or no, this was in probably the end of November and early December. And it is beautiful, beautiful yarn. This is, mm, I can't 
can't remember. <laughs> I will put in the fiber artist that dyed this. But my plan is to knit this up into a Harlow hat by Andrea Mowry. She recently on one of her episodes wore a Harlow hat that was knit out of her hand spun and it was so beautiful that I was like, I want to make that for myself out of this really awesome yarn that I made. If I do say so myself, wouldn't that be a cool Harlow hat? Anyway. <sighs> Y'all, that was a time. <laughs> I am so excited for 2023. I'm so excited to connect with you all and um, to be more present in my relationships in real life, but also in my relationships with you, my kind of fiber family. So here is to a beautiful 2023. Here's to hoping that um, you all are well and healthy and um, finding joy in this beautiful craft. Here's to hoping you are reading books that are making you so excited. <sighs> I am reading a book that's making me excited right now. It's actually right here. I've just read another book. I'll talk about my recent reads, but right now I'm currently reading Cloud Cuckoo Land by Anthony Doer. Doer? I'm not sure. Um, he wrote All the Light We Cannot See, and this is his kind of speculative sci-fi fantasy historical fiction behemoth and it's so good so far but I hope you're reading something that's bringing you joy I hope that you're getting to go outside and play and take advantage of the beautiful weather you know even though here I'm looking outside and it's snowy and cold, it's still so beautiful and peaceful. And I've been having a ton of fun playing around in it, as you will see in the coming months. So I'm wishing you joy and happiness, and I will be seeing you very soon. Like I said, um, I'm hoping to release another episode on Thursday of this week, and that is an episode that was filmed months ago with my mom, and we're kind of talking about crafting in her life and her family and um, showing off some art from her family and some beautiful pieces that were made by her mom, who is no longer with us. So it was a really beautiful conversation, and I'm excited to share it with you all. So. Here is to a beautiful 2023, and I cannot wait to use up all of this beautiful stash that I have. <laughs> Thanks for joining me in uh, kind of going over my stash, and I'll see you all soon. Bye.